Washington. Joining us now on the phone, local Tory MP for Kildonan St. Paul, Raquel Dancho. Raquel, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Hal. Thank you for doing this. Really appreciate it. Uh, And I said this to a political scientist that I had on my show yesterday. Uh, Guilty, right? When I was listening to the testimony, uh, the the prime minister said, yeah, I I should have recused myself, but I didn't. For me, that's where it ends. I completely agree, Hal. I mean, you just mentioned, you just had a clip with Matt Gurney, and he's completely right. I mean, the prime minister yesterday went on and on about how he felt that, no, this might be perceived as a conflict, but he did it anyway. Yet again, saying, you know, this could be bad, but I'm above the rule. So we're seeing this time and time again. This would be the third ethics violation from this prime minister and the fifth out of his government. So there's clearly a pattern where they think that the rules don't apply to them. I think we, uh, I think Canadians, whether you, you know, support this minority liberal government and the prime minister or not, I think it's pretty clear now what we've got in a government. And at some point, I would hope sooner than later, but at some point, Canadians will have to decide uh, whether or not uh, the Liberals and Mr. Trudeau are going to continue to be in power. But it, it seems to me that there's no doubt what we have now in this leader and in this government. Yeah, I would agree. You know, early on in this scandal, I wrote, uh, along with two of my conservative colleagues, to the Auditor General, actually, we're still waiting to hear back of whether she's going to investigate this whole fiasco. But we know the Ethics Commissioner is investigating both Trudeau himself for the third time and Bill Morneau for the second time. So again, that's five ethics violations. They've broken the law potentially five times now in very similar circumstances where they think the rules don't apply to them. And I think this whole scandal, I mean, it's been over, what, five weeks now? And it's just drips and drabs, twists and turns, and nothing is as promised. I just find that repeatedly as new information comes out, they try to blame the public service. And yet we know that the buck stops with the prime minister. He ultimately had to sign off on this. This is his fault, this entire fiasco, almost a billion-dollar boondoggle, so to speak. And it's just—it's really sickening as a taxpayer and as a member of parliament and the people I represent that there seems to be very little accountability. And he can apologize, but if you've watched the, what happened yesterday with the prime minister, it's really like, oh, well, you know, I really had good intentions and I knew it might be bad, but I did it anyway. And well, that's not good enough. That's not good enough. We need to hold our prime minister, first and foremost, at much higher ethical standards than he's been able to deliver to Canadians. I'm glad you said that because as a member of the opposition, I think it's on you now, you and the other opposition parties, to hold him accountable now. Uh, Why are we not going to, uh, or or is there a push uh, in in your uh, party to do something about this, or are we going to wait till you've got a leader who's been in place for a while and an election uh, down the road? You know, we've been pushing aggressively on this for the last month. And it would be great, Hal, if we were actually in Parliament, if Parliament was sitting. But as you well know, the Prime Minister shut down Parliament, so we're not able to debate any of these issues. We're only at the whims of when they allow us to go to committee to debate these things. So it would be great if Parliament would resume. It's supposed to come back on September 21st. I would be like, I would like to be sitting in Ottawa right now holding their feet to the fire. We're not able to have that opportunity because he took it away from Canadians. And if you had the ability, you representing Kildon and St. Paul, if you had the ability to bring down Mr. Trudeau and this government on this, the third scandal, as you point out, you would do it? You would vote that way? That's a really good question. I think that Canadians need to look at this issue and think, is this the guy we want to lead us? And those are the types of questions, again, if Parliament was sitting, we could debate. And I know our leader, Andrew Scheer, has said we want to see all of the facts come out. I want to see what the Auditor General says. I want to see if she's going to look into this. I want to see what the results of the Ethics Commissioner, what they're going to say about Morneau's behavior and Trudeau's behavior. I mean, let's look at the facts, Hal. Trudeau's family, his mother and his brother, were paid over $500 million in expenses for luxury trips to go speak at Wee Bay and for schmoozing with corporate elites. They were giving access to Trudeau's family. This was what we was doing, half a million dollars. They were giving luxury trips to Bill Morneau, 40, uh, valued at over $40,000 that he just happened to remember he had to repay. And it goes on and on and on, the connections between the Trudeau government and this charity. And it's just, it's just sickening to me that they're trying to say that this isn't a conflict of interest because, because clearly it is. Clearly his family has benefited from this and clearly we have benefited from access to the prime minister. They've received over five million taxpayer dollars 
to date since the prime minister took office, which is 10 times the amount that they ever received from the Harper government. So clearly there's tit for tat here. Raquel, thanks a lot for your time. Have a great long weekend. Yeah, thanks so much, Hal. You too.